viewers and subscribers welcome welcome back to another video now it's a boy sae big up on yourself and you know i'm coming up in today's video guys we have about two topics we, can, we wanna zoom in and all right first we're gonna zoom in and the possible playing 11 for the west indies 18 versus nepal um over there starting under 27 of this month plus we're also gonna touch on the Ghana cricket board basically suing or taking legal action against cricket west indies for the appointment of azim basarat as the west indies vice president we know we 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 basically um give updates on this a couple of months ago i think um but as all the videos are not on the channel anymore and this channel anymore we're gonna see if we can run a quick little recap all right so first up um they were unsatisfied with election um our appointment of azim basarat um to the cricket west indies vice president role as we know is the trinidad and tobago vice president right and they're saying that um the Guyana cricket were basically saying that based on some um information they received from trinidad saying that he has been misconducting over there in Trinidad with the cricket board and rate rate so they withdraw their support from him early on the people everybody in the Caribbean was supporting as in Basara to take up the vice president role right and then um before the election again a cricket board withdrawal and then they seek legal advice and now they're suing cricket West Indies because Dr. Shola was the one that come out and said that um he's gonna get the lawyers who give him advice to really issue a letter because he believed that um they basically followed the law in electing this man as the vice president so he was supposed to hand in information as regards to how his legal lawyers come to this decision of appointing this man as vice president our old election really went to yeah, some people we're gonna let you hear a little short article as regard to that but first remember hit that subscribe button all right and turn on the post notification bell now we're gonna zoom in on the possible plane 11 that we believe should take the field you understand people but really want to hear from you guys as well now this is just my plain living and i really want you guys to really share yours in the comment section all right so without further ado let's dive right into it you know as we know the a team has been announced people and it's a pretty good team on paper you understand based on the availability of players and i these are the core of western these players that are not at the ipl so um this is something that the West Indies is looking to really bud new players. We saw them um, budding two youngsters and we hope they get a game. But as of now, I don't see them making my starting 11. You understand? For the first T20. I don't know about the second one. Um, but based on the first T20, guys, I believe I have my starting 11 already. But I'm going to let you guys leave yours as well. So the first player on my list, people, Alec Athanas. Yeah, man. I believe he will open the batting in the T20 setup. Um, as we know, um, Brandon King is not there runs um and if i give you any news i regard to brandon king why he missed out on the 18 tour but i got news that he has suffered injury um during the west indies regional um championship um so he sustained injury so he wasn't a part of it and evan lewis they reached out to him but evan lewis was saying that he's not available you understand so he don't have any intention of playing for west indies no he's not in the right touch of farm i understand so so let's continue first play alec athanas i expect him to go by there and can he surprise us people and see if he can really clinch a little you know spot in the west indies t20 team as we know there and sammy said he's looking up for pop-up performances you understand? and this man could be a player that could pop up you know and perform well I understand moving on to number two we have um johnson charles and he definitely will be a part of the t20 world cup but i believe alec athanas and johnson charles will open the batting i understand the alec and athanas one and two moving on to number three now people who are you going with i'm going with andre fletcher i started batting the ilt at number three um we also have casey carty in the team so it's gonna be a gamble i understand people um because we know that the top three can open already um but are you going to go with Andre Fletcher experience or rather a Casey Carter youngster coming through? And Stanley, you know, can solidify the middle order in the T20 game. We saw him score 80 yard in a CPL match for Trinidad and Tobago. So he has, you know, he has prospect in T20 cricket or he has, you know, he have ability to play T20 cricket. But I don't know how they're going to do it. But I'm going to go with Andre Fletcher for the first T20. Understand? Remember, you don't have to agree with my starting event. All right, so let's continue. Number four, the captain Rastan Chase. I believe he will bat higher in the order since enough of those big names are not a part of the team. So expect Rastan Chase to bat at that number four position. I understand Rastan Chase at four. Moving on to number five, we had 
we have Mark Dial, you know. Um, he's a good left under from Trinidad, so he can also open the batting as well. But for now, I'm gonna keep him at number um five. So you understand? There's a couple well openers, guys, up in the top five. You understand? But Mark Dial can help a little with the ball as well. Moving now to number six now, people. We have been calling for this man to return to the team a long while now, Fabian Allen, and we know he's back now, guys. I would I would love to see if he can break into this T Twenty World Cup squad as well because we expect a lot from him. You understand? Um, he was at the top of his game and when injury hit him, so he does fall off. But now he get another opportunity. I think he was twenty nine now. Get another opportunity, and I want him to really grab it and see if he can, you know, make a comeback into the West Indies team. Moving on to number seven, guys. Kim Paul is another one coming right back. He's a good batter as well. He might bat up in the top four, top five as well. People, this might not be the batting order they come because we saw Kimo Paul in the CPL and he performed well up that number four position so you understand he could swap place with Rust and Chase. I understand so Kimo Paul is in my team as well. Number eight guys Matthew Ford the youngster guys he have pace and out Alzari Joseph is not there guys I expect Matthew Ford to do well. He performed well in the T20 in CPL and in Sri Lanka and in Canada League so we expect him to do well in the Nepal you understand so he at number 8 moving on to number 9 Gudakish Moti as my out and out spinner although we have Rastan Chick but I want Gudakish Moti in my team as well the left arm spin I understand so Gudakish Moti at number 9 position moving on to number 10 guys Obed Makai yeah, man, he's a nice, a nice prospect, Obed Makai, a left hander. I want to see if he can boost. If you can maybe make it into the reserve team or into the West Indies T20 World Cup squad, be nice because the left arm variation would be good. I understand, and he's, I think he has the best figure for West Indies international T20 cricket with six far, I think, we got against England. And if he could get back to that same farm, then it would be wonderful for the West Indies going forward. So number 10, Obed Makai, moving on to number 11, guys. Are you going to go with a Hayden Walsh? Are you going to go with a O'Shea Thomas? Are you going to go with a Kadim Alini or a Joshua Bishop? Uh, so and those are the two other players that don't name. But right now, I'm going to go with O'Shea Thomas. I understand, people. So three out and out pacer. Or two out and out pacer. Um, Kimo Paul and Matthew Ford could bat. So, you know all round at them, Alina all round at two. You know, so that's my potential starting living. What's yours? Let's recap mine. Alec Athanas, Johnson Charles, Andre Fletcher slash Case Carty, number four, Rastan Chase, Mark Dial, Fabian Allen, Kimo Paul, Matthew Ford, Gudakish Moti, Obed McCoy, O'Shane Thomas. What's yours? Leave it down below. Now we're gonna move right over to the article where um the Guyana Cricket Board suing West Indies, alright? Guyana Cricket Board takes legal action against Cricket West Indies over appointment of Bazarat as a vice president. So people, you know, a couple of months ago, I did a video, guys, as regards to the same topic, people, where, you know, um, nation wasn't, some nations of the Caribbean wasn't happy with um, Bazarat being named the West Indies vice president. And I thought this topic has already overdue or it has died down. But now we are getting news um, that the Ghana Cricket Board has followed up on its threat to take legal action against Cricket West Indies over the election of Azim Basarat as its vice president. Basarat, who is president of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, was elected to the post at the annual general meeting of Cricket West Indies in March of 2023. The Guyana Cricket Board, or the GCB, has nominated Basarat, but subsequently withdraw its nomination in writing before the elections were held, but after the nomination period had closed. At the elections, um, the Guyana Cricket Board representatives um, Restated um the board board's withdrawal of the nomination and according to a release objected to CWI's decision to proceed with the election of Basarat even though the nomination was withdrawn. The Ghana Cricket Board said the decision to withdraw its nomination of Basarat was taken after the Ghana Cricket the Guyana board received a certain information just prior to the CWI elections that included serious allegations of misconduct at the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board. Since the March elections, the Guyana Cricket Board has repeatedly addressed the matter of Basarat election with CWI. The release said 
two letters were written to Cricket West Indies President Dr. Kishore Shallow requesting the legal basis upon which Basarat was selected. There was no response to the letters. A meeting was convened um, by Dr. Shallow and other CWI representatives on July 5, 2023. Right, but the matter remained unresolved. Dr. Shallow stated that he has received legal opinion that the subject election was properly conducted and that he would submit that opinion and the names of the lawyers who gave it to the cricket, the Guyana Cricket Board, and the other stakeholders. This was never done, claimed the Guyana Cricket Board. The Ghana Cricket Board released further statement. The Ghana Cricket Board, as the shareholder uh, and full member of Cricket West Indies, has a moral and legal duty to institute, promote, and support the high standards and ideas are uh, and ideals of West Indies um, cricket to the to ensure that there is full and unwavering compliance with the Articles of Association of Cricket West Indies and that all elections held by Cricket West Indies are conducted in accordance with the law, especially now that with the emergence of the state allegations. So people, what's your take on people? I'm not going to say too much on it. I'm going to leave it to you guys to really leave your thoughts, all right?